Hello YouTube and welcome to the next in the Root Learning series of videos. Today's journey just felt like a natural continuation from the previous video I made from Preston to Carlisle along the West Coast Mainline Overshap route. So on today's journey we're going to be taking train 1 Lima 58 which is the 1757 Scott Rail service from Carlisle to Glasgow Central via Dumfries. So this is on the Dumfries branch of the West Coast Mainline Overshap route and the route only goes as far as Dumfries so that's where we're going to be driving to today and we will be calling at Anan on the way. The total distance for the journey is around 33 miles and it should take us around 35 to 40 minutes to get to Dumfries. The traction for the journey today is a Scott Rail Class 156. The Class 156 was built between 1987 and 1989 and a total of 114 of these trains were built and there are two coaches per train. The maximum speed is 75 miles per hour and each unit weighs around 70 tons. The engine power output is 286 horsepower. Once inside the cab of the Class 156, the first thing that I'm going to do is go over here and turn on the instrument lights, turn off the tail lights, and put the headlights onto day mode, which is the right hand headlight. I'm also going to turn on the destination light and the marker light. Next, I'm going to open the windows on each side so that we can hear the engine better and hear the noise of the train moving. And then finally we just need to go outside and using the F8 key change the destination display to say Glasgow Central. As you probably just noticed there was a Virgin Pendolino which has departed from Carlisle and we're waiting for the signal to clear once the Pendolino has cleared the signal section just ahead. So just to go through a couple more things, down here we have a standard 7 step power controller and a West Code 3 step brake. As you can see the signal has now cleared so I'm now going to release the brakes, put the train in forward which I just realised I'd forgotten to do and we'll start moving with step 3 power. The starting speed limit here at Carlisle is 20 miles per hour and we've got just over 17 and a half miles to go to the next stop which is Anan. So as we reach 20 miles per hour I'm going to shut off the power and allow the train to coast until we're able to accelerate further. There is quite a long section here of 20 miles per hour as we leave Carlisle. speed limit is now going up to 60 miles per hour so we can accelerate just before we reach the double yellow signal just ahead which probably won't be double yellow when you're playing it so I've now gone into full power to accelerate up to the 60 mile per hour speed limit the Pendolino which we're following is a much faster train so it won't hold us up at all now as it will pull away from us far quicker than we can pull away and has a much higher maximum permitted speed when speed limits on this route do go above 75 miles per hour, we have to bear in mind that the maximum permitted speed for this train is 75 miles per hour, so we must aim to not exceed that. As you can see the speed limit has now gone up to 95 miles per hour but as I said a minute ago we can't go above 75. There are no speed changes which now affect us until we turn off the west coast main line at Gretna Junction. The 
section of track between here and Gretna Junction is covered on two separate train simulator add-ons, the first being the West Coast Mainline North route, which follows straight up from Carlisle through Gretna Junction all the way to Glasgow Central via Lockerbie and Motherwell. And the second route which covers this section of the line is the Western Lines of Scotland route, which actually covers the full journey between Carlisle and Dumfries, and then continues on towards Stranra. The Western Lines of Scotland route is modelled in the British Rail days, in steam days, and I do plan on covering that route at some point in the near future. So for steam fans out there, I'm going to be doing some steam journeys, trying to drive a steam train in a route learning video. And for fans of older uh, BR first generation DMUs, I'm planning on making some other videos on that route using the class 111 in BR green livery. So hopefully the whole western lines of Scotland route will eventually be covered. So as you can see we've just passed another speedboard, the speed limit is still 95 miles per hour for conventional trains, but it's gone up to 120 miles per hour for tilting trains. Since the release of my last video on the West Coast Main Line, I have been asked some questions and made some requests about various journeys to do along the route. Uh, so I just wanted to say what the plan is. So I plan on continuing the journey which I finished yesterday, which was from Preston to Carlisle. And I plan on driving all the way from Carlisle to Glasgow Central in a class 390 to complete the journey. I then plan on doing the return journey from Glasgow to Carlisle and then Carlisle to Preston in a class 221 tilting super voyager so that I've covered the route in both directions with the tilting speed limits and then after that I plan on once again covering the route in both directions in more conventional trains such as the class 86, 87 and 90 because the speed limits are quite different on the West Coast Main Line in a non-tilting train to what they are in a tilting train. So I just want to give people the opportunity to watch the route from both perspectives and learn the speed limits in the varying types of trains. As you can see the speed limit has now gone up to 100 miles per hour for conventional trains and 125 miles per hour for tilting trains. As we get towards 75 miles per hour, I'm now going to go down one step of power to step six, which should hold us at around this speed. speed limit is now 105 miles per hour for conventional trains and still 125 for tilting trains and as you can see now we have a flashing double yellow signal coming up which is an approach control signal which means that we will be turning off the main line soon at Gretna Junction.
We're now approaching a flashing single yellow signal aspect. At this point I'm now going to idle the power. You probably also noticed there's a Morpeth board there warning of a 50 mile per hour speed restriction going left. And we will be going left at Gretna Junction. So the speed limit is 50 miles per hour crossing the points. And round through to the old Gretna Green Station until we join the single track section just after there. Now have a single yellow signal with a feather indicator showing us that we're going left. I'm going to brake for the 50 mile per hour speed limit. That's step two, just around this overbridge you can see here. So I'm now making a step two brake application to slow us down in time for Gretna Junction. And you can see the junction just coming up now. And I'm now going to release the brakes. As the last signal was single yellow, I am going to drive assuming that the next signal is displaying a red aspect until I can see otherwise. So I'm just slowing down a little bit now, just until I'm certain what aspect the next signal is showing. You can see that the next signal is displaying a green aspect, so I am now going to accelerate back up to the 50 mile per hour speed limit. Just along here we pass the site of the old Gretzner Green Station. This was opened in April 1852 and was closed on the 6th of December 1965. As this route is modelled in the late 1970s to early 1980s, the station is still closed here. And in fact, in 1975, this section of track was made single. Just to point out, the speed limit has now gone up to 70 miles per hour, so I'm going to accelerate up to that. So in 1975, this section of line was singled between Gretna Green and Anan. And the station at Gretna Green reopened in September 1993 with one platform. And then in August 2008, the second a second platform was opened when the line between Gretna Green and Anand was redoubled. So effectively the station was closed, the line was singled, the station was then moved west, it was then reopened, and the line was then redoubled again. So I'm not quite sure why they closed the station, singled the line and redoubled it. I'm not sure what economic sense there is in that, but um, we are talking about the government here, I guess. The speed limit is now going up to 80 miles per hour, but we do still have to bear in mind that our maximum permitted speed is 75 miles per hour. At the 80 mile per hour speed board, we had six and a half miles to go to Anan.
Once again, as we're reaching 75 miles per hour, I'm going down to step 6 of power. This may need to be reduced further to step 5. We'll see what happens with the speed. So here now we've got a track on the left and a ground signal just there at a point here. We're passing the site of East Riggs. We now have two and three quarter miles to go to our stop at Anur. As we approach this overbridge with the rear of the board just on the right there and the sharp right curve, we've now got one mile to go, so I've idled the power. We'll continue to coast now towards Anan and we will use the next AWS ramp as a braking point for the station. So now we've crossed the AWS ramp, I've gone into step 2 of braking, which I will reduce as we get closer to the station. I just want to ensure that we lose speed quick enough. And just before the station here, the speed limit does drop to 70 miles per hour, which will be our starting speed limit. And the start of the double track section is here, so we will now be double track all of the way to Dumfries. Here at Anam we want to stop just before the footbridge. Departing Anand, the starting speed limit is 70 miles per hour, and we've got around 15 and a half miles to go to the next and final stop, which is Dumfries. The speed limit has now gone up to 75 miles per hour, however it won't be too long before the speed limit drops back down to 70 again. So as we get towards 70 miles per hour, I'm going to aim to maintain that speed as I don't see too much point in accelerating above that.
number. So just to give a bit more information about what I plan to do over the coming months, uh, the ultimate aim of this channel, of course, is to cover every route in the UK, every journey you can think of pretty much, and every train that I can possibly get into a video. I will try and use them all at one point or another. So we've got the main route learning videos, which are on various routes, always on passenger journeys. And as some of you will have seen, that I've already made a route learning video in the USA as well. So I have gained a few US subscribers to this channel. So in the not too distant future, hopefully within the next few days, I do plan on making a second video in the USA, because I'm trying to make something for everyone. In addition to that, if I can get a bit more proficient with the German signalling system, I do plan on also covering some routes within Germany. Um, I do find the German signalling system quite hard to um, work out how to operate properly, but if I can do that, there will definitely be some German videos on the way. In addition to that, I've already made one UK freight video and I plan on making some more. These may be on routes that I've already covered in route learning videos, but it just helps to give a feel for freight operations which have a different feel to them to passenger operations and also gives the chance to show some cab rides uh, in locomotives that you wouldn't normally get to see if I was only doing passenger runs. Now that we're approaching 70 miles per hour, I've reduced to step six of power just to try and ensure we don't go above that speed. If the speedo needle does crawl above 70, then I will reduce to step five power just to ensure that we don't break the speed limit. And in fact, I'm going to go down to step five power now as I feel that we're going just slightly too fast for the 70 mile per hour speed limits coming up. Another point to make is that if people do have particular routes or trains that they would like to see covered, then I do take requests into account. I can't always fulfil them because I might not necessarily have the right DLC. And sometimes with some routes it, it can be difficult to get into the mood to drive and record that route. So I do have to be careful with that. Um, although I'm making this channel for other people, I also want to enjoy what I'm doing. So uh, some routes may take me a little longer to get round to than others. So the speed limit has now dropped to 70 miles per hour. So I'm just going between step 5 and 6 power now, as it seems to be difficult to maintain the speed at 70. So as we drop to around 67 or 68, and then increasingly power once again. Though the speed limit has now gone back up to 80 miles per hour, so I'm going into full power to accelerate up to our maximum of 75.
now reducing to step six power to try and ensure that we don't break the speed limit. to take notice of the crossing that we're just crossing now, which had the little hut on the right there. When we reach the next overbridge after that crossing, we're then three quarters of a mile from the next speed limit, which is only a small reduction down to 70 miles per hour. So as we reach the next overbridge, I will idle the power and allow the train to coast down to the 70 limit. If we're doing slightly above 70, as we can see the speed board, I will just use a small amount of braking to ensure that we don't break the limit. So now we've reached the overbridge here, I'm now idling the power. Now that we're down to 70 miles per hour, I'm once again going to need to use between steps 5 and 6 power to maintain it at this speed. Now that we've passed the 70 mile per hour speed board, we are 3 and a quarter miles from our stop at Dumfries.
now have a Morpeth board warning us of a speed reduction to 45 miles per hour, so I'm just idling the power now. The warning board is half a mile from the speed limit itself, and I'm going to brake at this overbridge just coming up, just after the signal that we just passed. So I'm initially going to go up to step 2 in braking, and then I will reduce the brake force as required. down to step one and now I'm releasing the brakes completely and you can see the 45 mile per hour speed board just coming up here. As we pass the speed board we're now around half a mile from the next speed limit which is a 30 mile per hour speed limit so I'm going to allow the train to continue to coast here and we're going to brake for the 30 speed limit on this sharp right curve just coming up so as we enter the curve I'm going to apply the brakes. So as you can see I've only made a light step one brake application which is about right for this curve here. I'm now releasing the brakes and the 30 mile per hour speed board is just coming up. You can now see the platform at Dumfries just ahead. going to apply light braking. I don't want to enter the platform at faster than about 25 miles per hour. And our stopping point here is at the two and three car stop marker which is by the footbridge just coming up. So here we are, arrival at Dumfries. Thanks for watching and I hope that you've enjoyed the video.